Evaluating Murray's patent was a very worthwhile endeavor. The task was difficult because I had to first cull out the exaggerated claims that proved to be untrue. The three biggest myths were a COP of 1.84, overunity without frequency doubling, and the importance of the skew angle. Nonetheless, a COP of 1.3 is documented in the patent description. The overunity must come from somewhere, and a phase change with distortion is the only thing that makes sense when only the patent data is considered. Murray seemed to have only touched on the tip of the iceberg, and this shows full potency of what he proved possible. Unfortunately, I can only reveal the science and the prior art at this time. This 10-inch diameter, 2-inch high model easily produces 500 watts. Simple scaling makes a 6KW home generator 18 inches in diameter and about 12 inches high. Murray's most significant discoveries were generating voltage with his monopole rotor and changing phase with coil configuration. He doubled frequency using mechanical full wave rectification rather than electronic switching. I doubt that electronic switching could duplicate Murray's phase change with or without conserving energy. Typical voltage is represented by V sub zero, and Murray's output voltage is represented by V sub m. Murray narrowed his rotor to produce this waveform. Maximum voltage and torque are typically at zero degrees. Murray's design produces no voltage or torque at zero degrees. Avoiding torque at zero degrees may be the sole source of Murray's overunity COP. Nonetheless, he has done what very few others have been able to do, and it's an incredible accomplishment. Murray ran into a roadblock. His patent indicates he only produced 10 watts of power. Scaling his design to get more power might be considered, but his road was also blocked by a COP less than a quarter of what is needed for a viable product. Murray's skewed rotor is also a significant manufacturing challenge. I have tested monopole stators and could duplicate Murray's waveform with what is shown here. I made the fixture to test brushless DC motor concepts. The goal was to design coils producing as much torque as possible. Designs like this produce very little voltage and even less torque. Murray's invention was not quite the same. The differences were puzzling, but now are understood. Murray succumbed to the temptation of an easy way to increase his voltage. I ran a similar experiment that Murray also said he ran. This device doesn't double frequency and is difficult to configure with a skewed rotor. However, the AC voltages were four times the prior experiment's voltages and totally consistent with Faraday's and Lenz laws. The results were very disappointing as far as a motor is concerned. At best, I got half the torque that was expected according to the same laws. Additional efforts produced even less torque. A friend suggested that shaded pole motors also defy the laws and typically produce half of the expected torque. He then showed me why I should expect no more than 78%. Testing consisted of spinning it to 3000 RPM to determine flux density and measuring torque at different positions without spinning. Now regrettable, generator possibilities were not explored. The goal was a brushless DC motor using state-of-the-art IGBT transistor switching and some innovative overlapping coils. We started with a classical six-pole rotor. Magnets were one cubic inch bad boys from K&J. At 3000 RPM, we got 24 volts with 21 turns of wire, which indicated that we were within a few percent of the 10,000 Gauss that we expected. We tested many different coil configurations on essentially monopole stators. Stators were all laser cut lamination stacks. Four stators were tested with various details to accommodate different coil configurations. We never got anywhere near the torque that we expected. Some of the lost torque could be attributed to cost-effective shortcuts, but most of the losses were never accounted for. But now the light bulb comes on. As soon as I plotted Murray's voltage, I remembered where I had seen that waveform before. 
Murray's dead zone at zero degrees resets the phase for every cycle. Dead zones are at 90 degrees without frequency doubling, but the effect is the same. Anyone interested in pursuing this technology might first try to plot voltages for the oscillating fixtures. I would gladly discuss their theories and ask what they would expect from motor and generator applications. Textbook stuff indicated that I should have produced 0.8 newton meters of torque with the six pole motor on the left, but I only measured 0.36. As you can imagine, funding for the brushless motor project quickly dried up after I reported 45% efficiency seemed to be the best that I could do. I never got a chance to say, if you think that's bad, let me show you how I can make it 10 times worse. I have some regrets that I did not pop a resistor on the coil when I was running the Gauss test. Maybe I should shelve the regret. Any motor precipitated from that project would have been severely encumbered. The encumbrance has long passed, so I can now make this offer. Anyone interested in a piss-poor monopole motor with less than 10% efficiency? It has some interesting phase characteristics that might make it a pretty good generator.